I want to give you some new tax law changes so you're up to date. In fact, there's new tax residence laws in the Caribbean island of Nevis. A new filing is now underway in the Cook Islands and many other offshore jurisdictions. So I want to talk to you about how this may affect you if you have an offshore company or an offshore bank account. And we've seen law changes in many of the jurisdictions. And these changes have primarily been prompted by the European Union as a means to thwart tax competition. So what does this mean to you if you have an offshore company and or a trust and or thinking about forming? one. Hi, I'm the business guy with Asset Protection Planners and OffshoreCompany.com. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please help me by clicking the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thanks so much. And I want to keep you up to date. So you can also click the subscribe button and the notification bell so that when more videos come out like this, you'll get notified and you'll be up to date. So let me give you a little background about Nevis and the Cook Islands so you really understand what's happening and how these legal changes will affect you. Now, Nevis is one of the main islands in the two island country of St. Kitts and Nevis. And in 1984, Nevis took a leading role in the offshore services industry in the Caribbean by launching the Nevis Business Corporation Ordinance. And then in 1995, they enacted some really great legislation called the LLC Ordinance and really, really great laws. And then they made subsequent amendments to keep up with the times and gave it the title of the LLC with the strongest asset protection worldwide, especially when combined with an offshore trust. In fact, my organization has established more Nevis LLCs than any company in the world. Nobody's even close. In fact, I personally know the last two premieres of Nevis. You can see pictures of me with them on our website. The title premier is the highest political office on the island. And the current premier and I communicate regularly on a casual basis and we have each other's phone numbers. Okay, now the Cook Islands. When the Cook Islands enacted the International Trust Amendments Act of 1989, it really became the premier offshore trust jurisdiction. So the law there affords the utmost in asset protection while still maintaining the flexibility and privacy for U.S. trust settlers. Now, Cook Islands trust companies are some of the most reputable, experienced, and thorough and competent trustees in the world. In fact, look up the least corrupt and most trusted countries in the world. In fact, New Zealand is tied for number one, the most trusted, least corrupt country in the world, and Cook Islands is part of New Zealand. So anyway, what kind of pull does the EU have over these countries? Okay, well, the EU provided Cook Islands with assistance of almost 12 million euros, or currently about 14.2 million US dollars, between 2008 and 2013 under the European Development Fund. And most of it went to water, sanitation, public health, economic growth, environmental items. And as far as St. Kitts and Nevis goes, the EU is the largest grant aid partner for development. The purpose? To facilitate St. Kitts and Nevis EU cooperation. And the aid focuses on renewable energy and provided them with about 2.6 million euros or about 3 million US dollars. So, okay, with that backdrop, here come some officials from the EU. Let's say about seven guys all dressed up in suits over to say Nevis to meet with Premier Brantley, who I know personally. And they say, hey, Premier Brantley, I know we're providing Nevis with a lot of money. And, and you know, by the way, we don't really like it when you tell our citizens they can invest in your country and not pay taxes. So say Mr. Monet, who lives in Paris, France, or Mr. Schneider from Berlin, Germany, if you start a business in Nevis that employs 20 people in Nevis, your business doesn't have to pay any taxes. So Nevis has 20 more of its citizens employed, so that's good for Nevis. But it's bad because Mr. Schneider could have started that same business in Berlin and employed 20 Germans. But if a Nevisian started that same business in Nevis, that business would have to pay taxes. So they say, hey, Premier Brantley, I mean, you don't give that benefit to your own citizens, so why are you giving it to ours? We don't really like that. So they say, you know all that money we gave you? And you know your access for borrowing money from the World Bank? And you know those correspondent banks that give your banks access to do business in Europe? Well, we wouldn't really want all those nice things to disappear, would we, Premier Brantley? Now, I'm not saying this exact scenario happened in this way with these exact words and that they were offering these exact benefits, but you get my my point, I'm not really far off, and that's how it really goes down. And the key thing is with politicians, if their whole economy goes down the tubes and you have a whole bunch of people unemployed and things aren't going well, well, their chance of being reelected really goes down quite a bit. So they're going to perk up and they're going to listen to what these seven guys in suits say to them. So the EU says, okay, I'm going to leave it up to you, but I want you to write some laws and define what it means to do business in Nevis. And when they actually do business in St. Kitts, Nevis, I want you to treat our citizens 
citizens the same way you tax your own citizens. So you go ahead. We'll give you 18 months to do that. And all those nice things we've been doing for you, well, hey, there's no reason for that to stop. So St. Kitts and Nevis legislature caves in to the pressure and they passed the Income Tax Amendment Act 2021, which as of the 1st of July 2021, enshrines the concept of permanent establishment in the tax code. So the amendment determines the circumstances whereby companies would be taxable by the Nevis St. Kitts authorities under the amendment. A company is subject to tax on its assessable income if it has a local permanent establishment, which includes the mind and management in a branch office, a factory, a workshop, place of business, a place of extraction of natural resources, as the law says so artfully. So the law applies to Nevis business corporations and Nevis LLCs and all other companies, regardless of the jurisdiction of registration. Keep in mind, this isn't just Nevis we're talking about. We're talking about the offshore services industry as a whole. So if you have a company in Belize, Cook Islands, Cayman Islands, Bahamas, the same thing is going to apply across the board. So as a practical matter for you, if you have a Nevis Corporation or a Nevis LLC or a Cayman Company, a Cook Islands LLC or whatever, these companies will remain tax exempt as long as they don't have local directors, managers, or fall afoul of other prohibitions under the Act. So and like I say, the same legislation is underway in the Cook Islands and many offshore tax haven jurisdictions. Now, you may have to file a simple form and some may refer to it as a tax form, but from my understanding, there will be no tax associated associated with it. There may be a small filing fee, but the form just declares that you aren't actually doing business in the jurisdiction as defined under the tax code. So anyway, that's your update. And for more updates as they come in, really be sure to click that subscribe button. It's real important. That way I'll keep you up to date. You can also click like, share this video with others. Thanks for watching. This is The Business Guy.